Hi, I have put together some learning stations, also known as workstations, to set up in my classroom for days that I will be um, teaching small groups. Um, so the first station that I created is called Scavenger Hunt. And I have a I've taken a file folder and glued to the inside a scavenger hunt. Um, what I did is I, <clears throat> we have previously read Novel Decay, and so I took questions regarding coral reefs, um, printed them onto a sheet of paper, and also tied it in with decay. Um, so the first question is, what is so special about a coral reef? Um, another one is, what are some shapes that a coral reef can be? What are some types of a coral reef? And at the very end of the scavenger hunt, it says, predict what might have happened to Philip and Timothy's coral reef since World War II. Give reasons for your answers. So in this workstation, what they would do is they would go over to the iPad. Um, this one is designed for an iPad. You could also use it on just the computer using the Internet. But they will go over to the iPad and <clears throat> pull up the Wikibot app or they could use a computer and pull up Wikipedia, research these questions um, to find their answers. And at the very end, that last question that I read, they're going to predict, they're going to use their knowledge um, to make a connection on what would have happened um, to the coral reefs that Philip and Timothy from the novel, um, what would have happened to their coral reefs if it were not for World War II. Um, in this workstation, I have included pictures of the app on with the instructions. That is for students of um, dyslexia or maybe even um, ELLs. Um, also, at the very end of the scavenger, once all the questions are complete, for the students like maybe that are considered GT, they if they finish really quickly, then there is an extension of the activity. It's an art extension. And it says, um, you may create a collage or drawing in whiteboard. And you can first Google images. Um, also, I, ha I still have, just in case, I still have pictures of those apps in the directions so that they can Google the images and then use the images to draw pictures in whiteboard. Or, like I said, if you're on the computer, you could use paint, or the students could use paint to, to develop a collage or a drawing that reflects the colors and patterns of a coral reef. My next workstation that I created also has pictures. This is a word chart. Now they're going to go over to, this is also designed for an iPad. This could be used on an iPad, on the computer, or just they could write with dry erase markers over the laminated file folder. Um, Again, I said there's pictures for students with dyslexia or those ELL, um, ELL students. So in this workstation, it's called a word chart. And what they'll do is I have a stack of vocabulary words. These vocabulary words actually, excuse me, they, they actually came with some, um, a textbook that is <clears throat> in the my mentor teacher's classroom. And I went ahead and took advantage of this because any materials that I, I feel like the school has purchased that we should be utilizing them. So I took this big stack of vocabulary, already laminated vocabulary cards. And this first one, as you can see, it says predict. Now, for the students that um, maybe struggle just a little bit, uh, on the back there is a sentence with that word used in the sentence to help them get a better understanding of what the word is. So they're going to take their vocabulary word and they're going to create a word chart. They are going to, um, on the iPad, what they would do is in whiteboard, in the app whiteboard, they would dissect the whiteboard but in four sections. I guess that wouldn't be dissect, but they would cut it into four sections. They're going to put their word at the top and a picture in another section. They're going to put a sentence in another section. And then in the, the very last section, what they would do is make a connection for themselves. Ask themselves, how am I going to remember this word? What is
reminds me of what kind of connection can I make with it to my life or in real life. Um, <clears throat> also, in the stack of cards, for the ones, for the students who are, like I said, considered ad, um, advanced or GT, there are several, as you can see, several vocabulary words of all different levels in this stack that they could um, choose from. So they could choose some of the more complicated words. They get to choose their word. Once they are finished with their word chart, then if they're using whiteboard on the app, um, I'm sorry, on the iPad, then they're going to email it to me so that I can view it. If they're using um, paint on the computer to do this um, activity, they would save that um, document or picture or file so that I can view it. The third workstation that I have created is called Write It Out. Now, this station, I've done the same thing for those dyslexia or uh, ELL students where I have included the pictures of the programs on the computer. Um, another picture is, there is a, one of the directions is to spell check um, their response to their writing prompt. And I even included the little icon that you see when you do the spelling and grammar check um, in case they have trouble with that. So in the write it out, I have also taken some of my old scrapbook paper um, and I cut them to size three by five just like note cards. And then on the back of those, I um, just printed out some um, writing prompts, cut them out and pasted them to my note cards. Now they will be able to go over, these note cards right here correspond with the novel that we've read in class and I will be using them in our classroom. Um, they correspond and to the novel. What they would do is they would select any writing prompt that they want and they will type it in a open office document. After they're finished typing it, they will do a spell check and a grammar check. And again, it will either be printed out or emailed to me so that I can view it. Now, the very last workstation that I have created is called, also in a file folder, it's called Quiet Corner. Now, for those students who really enjoy reading, I have created this Quiet Corner station for them to do that. This is also designed for an iPad. Um, in the iPad, I have a little picture of iBooks app on the directions. They will go to the iBooks and they will select a book um, that they would like to read that the, the school has or on my iPad if I bring it into the classroom, which I plan to do so. Um, books that I have either purchased, um, I have a son, so eight books that we have purchased and he has read or um, books that I think were interesting, or maybe even there was a special on a book and it was free this week and I have it on my iPad, they'll be able to go through and select those books and read them on the iPad. And they absolutely love reading on the iPad. We've been doing it a lot in the class of student teaching it and they love it. Another option, I have put a second option on this one because there are going to be some students who come over and they would like to read. However, there's not something on the iPad at this time that they enjoy to read. Um, or maybe there's not something challenging enough for them. And uh, I have included the section, second option for them. And this is where they can go to the iBook store. They're going to browse through some of um, the book reviews. They're going to browse through the book, see what looks interesting to them, and um, read the reviews. That way they're engaged. They're still reading. They're reading book reviews. I think this will really help them in their real life. Um, I know I read the reviews on the apps all the time. Um, <clears throat> also, and so I just think it's a great way for them to, to motivate them to want to read. Um, so those are my four workstations that I have created and thanks for watching.